did you know? School Sport Victoria offers 650,000 sporting opportunities in 31 different sports. At 10,700 events across the state every single year. That's a lot of kids playing sport. And for over 25 years, the Victorian School Sports Awards have recognised more than 1,500 students, teachers and volunteers for excellence and outstanding contribution to school sport. Now that's a champion effort. Good afternoon and welcome to the Ask SSV show. And we're very privileged to have the very amazingly talented Libby Birch. Welcome, Libby. Thanks for having me. It's really exciting to be involved in this show. No worries, man. It's always good to interview you because you've got so much good things, so many good things to say to young people, you know, over your age, under your age, all of that. You're quite a talented young lady for a 20 two-year-old you've achieved so much let's work through some of these amazing achievements you're an aflw player but you were a dual athlete at one time which we'll talk about in a second netball champion you're an ssv ambassador as well in 2016 you captained the victorian under 21 netball team and they came home with the silver then after getting a tap on the shoulder you were asked to try out for the AFLW and then you were um, brought on as a rookie for the Western Bulldogs where you spent three years and now you're with the beloved Melbourne. Amazing. How have you achieved so much in such a short time? Oh, it's been a pretty incredible journey to date. Uh, it's, it all sort of started from my primary school and high school years where I absolutely fell in love with sport and I think just getting out and trying whatever sport I could I was competitive in my nature so I just wanted to win at all costs and be involved in teams and and have friends and I think School Sport Victoria was awesome for developing that journey for me because obviously it, it, it provided me with that, that elite competition from such a young age where you know you could go and represent your state at nationals and um, but also have your, your obviously interstate competitions um, as well. So that was just a ter terrific starter for me and I've absolutely continued on that journey and, and football was never on my horizon at all. So it was a bit of a fork in the road uh, at about year 12, but it shows that, you know, never set your sights on something so strongly because um, you can always um, have other doors opened in your journey. You know, for those of you who don't know you, that answer you just gave, uh, like I know you, so there's like another 30 questions that I have in my head that I want to ask you around that answer, but you yeah. have given such a, a great perspective in terms of school sport, but let's start with where did it all start for you? Where, where did this love of sport stem from? Yeah, so when I was actually in, um, when I was a growing kid in primary school, in prep and grade one, I actually uh, wasn't in sport at all. I uh, just really enjoyed um, being, not like, you know, just working on my schoolwork and being with my friends. And all of a sudden I started to get bullied at school um, and I was having a really tough time. And it was actually my PE teacher at the time who got me into playing sport. So he said, come have a kick of the soccer ball on the oval at lunch and absolutely fell in love with the fact that you could just give sport a go and have a crack and you know make mistakes but doesn't matter and then obviously my competitive instinct came out and I just wanted to win and, and play with teammates so that's where it all started and after a couple of years the boys couldn't touch me anymore because I just felt so passionate about sport and leading my teams and helping um, everyone to to grow and and I loved learning new things so that's kind of where it all started for me which is fantastic now you, you mentioned quite a number of sports and having a sport teacher there that that got I guess um, encourage you and champion you in it all what about team Vic what was that like for you and, and what what teams were you around yeah absolutely so uh, at that point Team Vic was just such a, an important process in the journey. I can remember going, that's all I want to wear. I want to wear this Team Vic uniform. I want to be, I want to earn that and I want to uh, work so hard on my skills and, and, in, and press 
um, my coaches to make sure I could make that team and represent Victoria at a nationals. That was like, that was the, I, I still remember those journeys and I still remember those times with teammates. It, it was just the be all and end all for me at that time. And um, I ended up uh, in two sports actually at that time for hockey. I represented um, Team Vic and also for netball after a number of years. And I also represented the School Sport Australia team um, over in New Zealand for netball as well. So that was something that I was really, really proud of. And I still have all the Team Vic uniforms um, in my room packed up in a nice little area because it, that it's just really important memories for me. And they are the foundation, I think, of you learn so much and their foundation of the elite sport to come if you want to um, go that way. But also it is such a great experience um, as a person and, and to be with teammates and things like that. Brilliant. And we've got some questions that are rolling in um, and we'll get to them in a second, but you are so talented. So Team Vic in hockey, Team Vic in netball, brilliant stuff. And also represented, I guess, for the first time, represented the country over in New Zealand for netball as well. And that's where it kind of all started. So you mentioned that it was a bit of a turning point. So 2016, uh, I think you graduated in 2015 or 16? Yes, yeah, I think it was 15, yeah. 15, so 2016 was a massive turning point for you where you had to hang up your netball bib, in a sense, and move across to footy. Tell us about that decision and, and how, because, you know, there aren't too many out there that are dual that can claim to be dual athletes and wanted by two codes. So you had to make a pretty tough decision and t talk us through that. Yeah, so um, obviously netball growing up was my be all and end all and I wanted to be an Australian diamond uh, and that was just something that was in my horizons and I, I never wanted to sort of shift that view. Uh, and I actually hit a couple of setbacks, um, which we all do um, and a lot of athletes do. I missed two uh, pretty big selections, um, two years in a row. So. I missed out on both Australian selections at a 21 and under age group, and it was and it was very shattering because I'd worked so hard and I had this one one journey, one thought that I wanted to be this Australian diamond and I wanted to climb this ladder. And I suppose what I've learnt from the journey is that it's not this one ladder that you just go year after year and achieve all these goals and just get higher and higher until you achieve that dream. Sometimes it's a bit of a roller coaster, and for me that year was a roller coaster. And I actually, yeah, tried the sport of football in that year just for some fitness <laughs> at the start. I was just like, oh, why don't we do something different? And that can be a bit of my cross training. And uh, I actually fell in love with the sport. And it was Daisy Pierce, who's uh, now our captain at Melbourne uh, Football Club, and she's a pioneer of women's football, that actually took me down to my first session. Uh, she shared my boots with me, and she's my best friend uh, to date. And from there, I just fell in love with football. and. I was a dual sport athlete for about six months to a year, uh, and but it got to the point where I couldn't manage uh, both sports. They were in the same season, um, and I had to choose uh, one, and I chose football uh, because it was just such a new and exciting challenge for me, and I was really loving it and wanted to make sure that I did the Western Bulldogs proud. Um, in the next AFLW season. Well, I'm sure you did because you actually came away from a uh, with a premiership. Is that right? Uh, in yes. one of those years, so yes. you now are uh, claim you can claim to be an AFLW premiership player in 2017. I think that was uh, 18. 18. Okay. Yes. Which is pretty good. Now, I'm sure Netball would welcome you back with open arms, but you obviously made the decision and, and now you are sticking with football. Who knows what the future holds? And you're right. It is. I love the way you answered that, that it is a roller coaster because a lot of the, the teenagers and even primary school kids that we work with, and, and you sort of touched on it before with your answer in Team Vic, is Team Vic becomes their everything. It becomes their Olympics. It becomes their, their make or break. If they don't make it, that's it they, they throw away sport in a sense but yeah. so often we we've talked to like sophie taylor who's an ssv ambassador went yeah. and tried out for the hockey team didn't make the hockey team was totally shattered but made the team vic team for cricket and yet went on to become an amazing she's now a, a hockey root for yourself amazing. Yeah. didn't make yeah. team vic for football football wasn't even in the radar for you you played hockey you played netball 
you didn't get selected in the under 21s team which you talked about just recently and that is um that's not a primary that's a massive thing so that would have been yeah. i guess for you a defining moment for you to go am i going to let this beat me or am i going to beat this and move forward yeah exactly precisely right and i think setback setbacks if you think about them they actually can make you they can make you who you are going to be um you can really harness them and use them uh to become a better athlete and a better person and I actually did miss out on my first Team Vic team, uh, now that you mention it. I missed out on the under 12 netball side. Um, uh, and I was absolutely shattered. They, yeah, I got cut in the last round and I was disappointed because all my friends made it. And as you said, yeah, it is the Olympics of, of that age group and where we are. We're in that moment and that's all we want to represent Victoria with. But it is everyone all athletes all great athletes go through setbacks and if you really harness them and see the positives um it you'll come out of it better brilliant stuff brilliant stuff now we're just going to move to a couple of questions that have come in before yeah. we move into the football discussion we've got a, a young man named john o'carroll who has been your biggest mentor and you kind of answered this at the melbourne footy club yeah, uh, I definitely would say thanks for your question. Uh, it would definitely be Daisy Pierce at the Melbourne Football Club. Uh, as I said, she um, got me into football and initially I was absolutely terrible at the sport. I could not kick a footy, I could not handle the ball, I couldn't bounce the footy, yet she saw something in me um, and persisted with me and showing me how to play the game of football. And I suppose that patience, but also uh, the way she led me into this sport and helped, uh, I guess, nurture me in this environment, but then also let me spread my wings. And, and obviously I moved from that Darabin Football Club to Western Bulldogs, so I was back on my own for a little bit, but now I've returned back to the Melbourne Football Club. Which is brilliant. Now, obviously the Falcons was very foundational for you, but for those of you listening who don't know this, you correct me if I'm wrong, you were only playing football for about three months before you got the tapped on the shoulder, right? You, this wasn't yes. something yes. that you were spending, you know, 10 years playing with boys or no, whatever. No, no, I um, I'd only picked up a football in June 2016 for the first time. And then three <laughs> months later, I got the tap on the shoulder to become a rookie for the Western Bulldogs. So very, very raw I was. Brilliant. And th there probably would have been a lot to learn, but this is a testament to you as a person. And, and I've certainly seen you on the field and anyone who's watched you play, there is no other focus but getting that ball. So you obviously showed those people that were looking at those trialists that you meant business. So brilliant stuff. Hey, we have another question that's come in from Julian Merritt. I think... Julian Merritt is a, is a parent and she's asking this on behalf of parents, I think. Did your parents ever want you to do another sport they thought you would like? Like, was there pressure from mum and dad to to do something different? Like, don't do this netball thing, it's too dangerous, too many injuries. Yeah, yeah, no, um, very good question. My parents have always been fully supportive of whatever makes me happy. And so initially, uh, you know, it was, they sort of guided me into a few sports and sort of introduced me to every sport. So whether it was athletics, whether it was netball, whether it was tennis, whether it was hockey, I tried sort of everything. And then whatever I kind of liked, I kind of stuck with. Um, and then, you know, when we got to that year 12 stage where I was getting unhappy in one sport, um, it was just a matter of, I guess, discussing with them who are my key support people in my life just about what I was feeling in the sport of netball at the time and that I needed a bit of a refresher and I suppose just having that, I guess, friendship with them to talk about maybe trying footy and um, but they've always been in full support of whatever makes me happy. So if I turned around and tomorrow and said I didn't want to play sport again, um, they would be in full support of me. Probably be in full support and in the fetal position, I'm sure, because yeah. they have loved watching you compete as well. Now, you, you mentioned before that you liked, you know, whatever you played, you enjoyed at the time. I'd imagine it would have been difficult to choose some sports because this is how I see you anyway. Any sport you put your hand to, you're going to be amazing at. You're going to be selected for the top team. You're going to be put into the, those um, influential positions. Would that be accurate? Yeah, I think uh, I've always been that type of person 
not only, and I know School Sport Victoria prides itself on this, but making sure that, yeah, you're a great person, a great athlete and a great student as well. And I've always been that person that whatever I put my mind to, I want to make sure that I do my absolute best. And it was about being the best I could be. So whether it was, yeah, playing tennis, uh, running in cross country for School Sport Victoria, I just wanted to make sure I put my best out there. And that didn't mean always winning. You know, sometimes you come 10th, 11th, 12th, but if you did your best, that's all you can do. So that's kind of my mentality in uh, how I play sport and how I go about things. Now you touched on the, the academic side and we'll talk about that in a second because it's pretty remarkable, again, as, as much as how many dimensions there are to Libby Birch. But in particular, what advice would you give to your 12 year old self now? Go like rewind the clock 10 years. Yeah. What would you say to yourself 10 years ago, knowing what you know now? Yeah, knowing what I know now is a really, really great question. I think I'd say just to be really open to whatever happens. Um, I think I got too bogged down in some of the setbacks that I, and, and it's completely normal to get really upset by them. But I think I would take them in my stride now um, and I would tell my 12-year-old self to take it in her stride, um, accept that and then move on and, and get better and um, accept that, that there's a new challenge in your life at that point uh, and not get so bogged down and upset by it, uh, but make sure that I console my support group, whether you're at your parents, your friends, um, and get some plans in progress for how you're going to overcome that challenge. Brilliant, very very well an answered. And um, and the fact is, I, I know you well enough to know you're not making this stuff up. You actually genuinely live this stuff. You yeah. are so remarkable, it's not funny. Now, going back to academic, I know you don't like talking about this, but I wanna brag on your behalf just for a second. Dual athlete in 2016, but in 2015 you were graduating year 12. You got a, uh, you know, you worked hard. But what is amazing is that often we find a, an athlete will do really well in a sport and not so well in academic. Doesn't mean they're um, not intelligent. It just means that they focused on their sport. For you, it was the opposite. You did very well in your a academic and you did extremely well in your sport to the point where you got an ATAR score that others. I would call insane. Now, tell us what your ATAR score was, if you don't mind. Uh, no, that's okay. Um, it was 94.05. Insane. Brilliant stuff. And you're starting to be a physiotherapist, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And I initially didn't think I would be able to get that mark uh, and I would, wouldn't be able to get into physio. Uh, so it was kind of just my my motivation to just do my best in my studies again and to put it all out there and to see what I could actually get and what I could actually achieve if I really put in, you know, some really organized study periods. Or I know because I know that during that time with juggling school and juggling sport, there's just so much on. And I can remember packing hockey bags, packing nickel bags, <laughs> packing um, homework, packing school, emailing teachers. But, uh, you know, the one thing I'd say is that during that time, just making sure you're really organized and you're devoting equal amounts of time to your school studies um, and your sport because you always want to have that balance in your life. And I've always been chatted to about having, you know, that plate of food uh, and making sure that you've got equal amounts of, you know, your sport and your school, uh, but also some free time to yourself. And I probably have learned that too over a couple of, years that you need to give yourself some more time to enjoy life, go out with friends, um, see movies and enjoy that as well. And that is so important in terms of, I guess, keeping a consistency of enjoyment in what you're doing, not only on the field, but off the field as well, because that the off the field fun certainly fuels the on field fun as well. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's great what you have been able to achieve. Now, as if there was a teenager listening who wanted to represent a club in AFLW, what would you say to them? What advice would you give them? I'd say to make sure that you are doing everything you can um, to grow your footy skills uh, and put yourself out there. So don't be afraid to head down to a local club, 
no matter what age you are, um, or head down to a clinic or any of the AFLW clinics or um, making sure that you're putting yourself out there in front of people um, and don't be, yeah, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's what makes you better. Um, and make sure you continue to strive for that goal because it is an awesome goal um, and there are amazing pathways in the AFLW League right now, right from AFL Auskick right up to the AFLW League. So make sure you jump online and check um, some of those pathways out and, yeah, again, put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of making mistakes or being told no because that's happened to me a thousand times. And you just got to make sure that you stick to your own belief that you can do this. Um, and no matter how long it takes, because trust me, it took me at least two years to learn how to kick a footy. That's what I was about to say. How, does, how did you get to a point where you were only playing for three months and you hadn't picked up a footy before then to bring yourself up to speed with girls, I'd imagine, that were playing footy back with boys eight, ten years earlier than that. How did you bring yourself up to speed so quickly? Did, did YouTube come into effect? Did you get out there and just kick a ball? Yeah, I think, to be honest, Ralph, I don't think I did catch up to them from a skill level until probably uh, 2018, which was two years later. But what I did use is I tried to use what strengths I knew I had, and that was my training work ethic that I learned from you know being in School Sport Victoria, for so many years, learning how to travel uh, and perform, um, knowing how to strengthen my body um, and be really strong and know how to train. I think that's what I used. My strength was that and my strength was also leadership on the field. So knowing that I could give that to my team um, and learn the skills no matter how long it took. And trust me, there was a lot of frustrating times but I knew how to improve my skill. Skill is just practicing. That's all it is. It's going out and practicing when you don't want to, when it's raining, when it's windy. Um, going out there and kicking the footy with my brother and my dad. Um, and they, you know, pulled their hamstrings off the bone because I was asking them to kick so much. But uh, it's, it's all about using your strengths and then improving the things that you know that you can. Brilliant stuff. And I'd imagine some of those training sessions that you don't want to do and you go out and do become some of the best and the most memorable training sessions that you've done as well. Absolutely. And probably the one thing I'd say on that is, um, especially during this difficult time that we're in currently now um, yep. with COVID-19, that uh, we always um, try and get as much support around us as we can to help with our motivation. So yes, whether it is mum, dad, your brother at the moment or your sister at the moment, um, just making sure, or whether you're on Zoom or FaceTime, making sure that you've got that support and encouragement to keep going. Brilliant, and you certainly have been blessed with some great parents that you have who support yeah. you like to the hill. And we've got another question that's coming from Bridget Horton from Beaumaris Primary School. Um, she has asked this question, and it's a valid question um, that I think is gonna shock the listeners. How much do you normally get paid? Great question, Bridget. Very, very good question. Uh, so at the moment, AFLW players are on a six-month contract. Uh, AFL men's players are on a yearly contract, so we're a little bit different to the men at the moment. Um, the average salary is between ten and thirty thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, around about there. That's probably the average salary for six months. Um, of sort of full-time athlete work um, and then if we wanted to compare that to what an average male salary would be um, over a year it would be probably around 300,000 would be the average salary so there's still a long way to go for female athletes in sport um, particularly in football but um, we are up for that challenge and we are growing every year and with the support of all the kids now playing Auskick, um, all the females and males joining in, we're certainly going to get there sooner rather than later. It certainly is growing and it's a, a lovely to hear about that, but it is um, concerning and I'm sure it fuels your fire. You're being very professional right now to say the right things, but you know, to, to start at ten to 30,000, 
the men wouldn't get out of bed for thirty thousand. There's just no way they wouldn't even they no. wouldn't even start where your salary ends in a sense. And I'm not yeah. talking sorry, not your salary, but the salary of a highly played, highly paid AFLW player. You're saying the most is thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Now, without wanting to fuel your fire any further, but I'll say this from my perspective: that doesn't seem to be a very big carrot for women looking on seeing the daisies of this world the libbies of this world the the girls who are playing right now there isn't much of a carrot for those girls to think i'd love to be a player one day because i would love to play in a sport that doesn't have the equal value as men yeah i think uh it, it is a time that's quite challenging and at times we get quite upset and frustrated by it and that's in all honesty um, however, I think what really enriches the women's game is the fact that we aren't completely playing for money. We are playing because we want to inspire the next generation of uh, AFLW players and inspire a whole new sort of cultural movement about equality. So I think our movement is more, more about at the moment um, showing the world what women can do. And by doing that, we want to show that we deserve, well, that we do have, we should have equal opportunity um, at salaries and hopefully over the next couple of years we'll see that um, improvement but I think it's it's on everyone to show their support for AFLW and women in sport in general to make sure that we have that equal equality in sport. Yes, so true. Now, you know, what's interesting in this whole conversation, generally speaking, is that AFLW, women's AFL, is probably one of the more higher paid sports. You look at hockey, um, soccer, cricket, they're, they're not just, they're not paid as much there. So that's, um, I love what you're doing and I love you that you're championing the cause there. And I think you're right, there's movement that's happening and, and it's exciting movement, actually. It's, it's really growing in this country. Tell us what it was like, though. Your first round, 2017, you just trialled. The doggies were playing against Fremantle. It was at Witten Oval. Yeah. Oh, good memory. You rolled out. And what was yeah. it like to roll out to, correct me if I'm wrong, was a lockout crowd? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was something to behold. Like, I could never have imagined him playing in front of more than 10,000 people were packed, Witten Oval in Footscray, uh, running out in the first uh, year of AFLW was incredible and running out with your teammates, um, your best friends at the time. And knowing that it's more than football and, you know, it was just a really special experience and one I'll never forget and one that you want more and more of. Uh, it's especially to see you know be able to go up to the fence after the game and sign autographs and get photos with the young kids yeah it's just really special and it's something that i think everyone uh who wants to be an elite athlete dreams of um yeah it's just one of those pinch yourself moments yeah it would be and i'm sure you recall it quite often as well so what are you doing to keep yourself occupied during this time of isolation yeah, I think at the moment it's a really challenging time for all of us. We're very isolated. Um, we're not with our teammates uh, and we're not doing our regular routine with school, with sport, uh, with training. So what I think is the most important thing to do during this time is get yourself in a nice routine, um, whether that's writing yourself a calendar of what you're going to do every week. Um, getting yourself to do a challenge every week. So at the moment, what I've been doing is writing myself a challenge every week to complete each day. Wow. So um, during this week, for example, I've got 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups to do um, every day for a week. Last week was a training session challenge where we had to do four 1K um, efforts um, with body weight squats and sit-ups during each. So it's just making sure that you're adding variety into your training doing different things, but also using it as a time to refresh, rejuvenate um, and learn different things. So whether you wanted to try a new hobby or um, learn to do something with the football that you've never done before or a netball or a hockey. I know that hockey, there's so many amazing skills you can learn um, in, your, in your bedroom. Um, 
So, you know, those little things can make you a better athlete when you come out of this time and get to go and see your teammates. Brilliant stuff. And I know you've used your backyard very well to set yeah. up. I, I love the videos that we've seen where you've set up some GWS players that you've tackled yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah anyway, I'll stop thinking creative. about that because it's going to make me laugh too much. <laughs> what did you say? Sorry. It's all about being creative at home. Uh, set up your own gym, set up some opposition players that you can um, tackle and have fun with. Um, I definitely got my arts and crafts out, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, what? Um, John O'Carroll's asked this question actually on uh, YouTube. What's your favorite position to play on the footy field? I think everyone likes to play in the forward line, but I've actually never played in the forward line. I've, um, I have always been a defender and being a defender and making sure that I stop my opponent from kicking lots of goals. Um, it's been, you know, a, a very much a learning period being a defender for many years um, and growing in that position. But yeah, I'm, I was a full back this year for Melbourne. I'm usually a half back um, in, in more recent years. So being a full back was another new challenge I had to learn. I'd imagine that the being the forward position is is really the glory position. It's the, where all the goals are scored. Yeah. But you're right, defending is just as important. And I uh, used to love being a defender when I played soccer. Now we want to just talk through um, what what has sport done to set you up for life in general. Yeah, I think sports taught me a lot about teamwork and because you need and commu being able to communicate with people uh, which you need in everyday life and you need um, when you're working in teams of people in businesses in for my sake it's physio so talk being able to talk to patients um, and understanding them as I would understand my teammates so I think those two things sports really taught me that teamwork and that ability to communicate but it's also taught me to work hard at things and that nothing comes, nothing worth having comes easy. So, and that's really applicable to life. You can't expect things just to come and, and fall in your lap. Um, you've actually got to work for them. So I've, you know, working on my physio degree, I mean, my final year, it's taken me five years, but I'm nearly there. Um, you know, and being a, you know, being a good person takes work as well. Um, making sure you're looking after yourself and others also takes work. So I think there's a lot of things that uh, sport encourages us to do and a lot of things that we learn from sport that we can carry over to our lives. Very true. Now, I guess, um, look, taking on what you've mentioned in regard to your studies, you said you're very close. You've actually only got a little bit left before you actually finish off as a yeah. physiotherapist. And I reckon, this is my personal opinion, and I might be being biased, you'll be a fantastic physiotherapist because you'll apply <laughs> the knowledge that you have of your own body as an athlete to what you've learned and the customer's gonna get a very full experience. When they come in and tell you that they've overdone it, you'll know what they're talking about when they've overdone it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> precisely. Yeah, I um, I think it'll be really amazing to have that insight as an athlete, um, and be able to help athletes like myself who come in with injuries. However, I've really enjoyed helping uh, some really sick patients in ICU at the Alfred, um, in you know patients that are recovering from strokes, and if we think about those patients, they've really had a major setback and the way that they go about their life um, and improving each day with little things, uh, I, you know, connect with sport as well because, you know, every little skill takes time and whether that's learning to walk again, that's something that really resembles to sport. Very good. Now, just before we'll wrap up soon, but before we do, take us through a typical week of training when you're in form so let's think yep. through your um in the middle of your aflw season you're wanting to peak in a sense or be in a spectacular yep. form to make finals what does a typical yep. week look like for you because you mentioned before about the finance and we and we talked about that we won't talk about that again but there are some boundaries that the afl 
have put around how much you can train, when you can train and all of that to compensate for some of the finance that you're not getting. Is that accurate? Yeah, so you're only allowed at the club sort of between 15 and 20 hours per week. Uh, so any other time that you're in there, you're not getting paid for. So it's up to you to make that decision, um, which we all do. We all go in and do extras. Um, so what a typical week looks like for me, if I played on a Saturday night um, in Sydney, we might fly back on the Sunday morning and then um, we would usually go into recovery. So whether it's at the beach or um, at the club in the ice baths, get in the ice baths, get hot and cold happening, make sure we have compression on all our bruises if we have anything like that. We usually have to sleep quite a bit on the Sunday because it's Saturday night, so a really late game. Um, so yeah, we sleep a bit on the Sunday, sleep's a really important factor. We usually have to get ready for another big work week on the Sunday as well because we will be juggling work or uni at that time. So um, for me, then on a Monday, we would work or go to um, uni and then we would have like a review meeting where we review Saturday's game on the Monday night and do some skills, some really light skills where we're not running around too much. Um, and again, do some ice bars and things like that. Tuesday, we do work and things like that and then have that off from from any activity. And then we'd come back on the Wednesday and have about a five, six hour stint at the club from four onwards. So we probably leave the club at about 10, 9.30 at night after a full day's work. So yeah, we'd come in, do our rehab, prehab, um, weights, you know, our session out on the track, running, everything that you can imagine that you'd fit in a normal day we do in a couple of hours uh and then we have a rest day on the thursday come in again on the friday possibly have a captain's run on the saturday and then if we're playing on a sunday we play then but for me you know everyone's got a little bit of a different routine but i like to have a really couple of easy days before game day yeah, you, you explain that well, and that um, is certainly not for the faint-hearted. You do have a very full week. I mean, it, it must be nice at least coming to the end of physiotherapy and knowing that you don't have to do all that um, voluntary work, in a sense, unpaid work. Yeah. You'll yeah. be fully qualified, and you'll have the beautiful balance of working full-time and managing your sport around that. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm really excited about that next journey because it's been a, a long five years of study, that's for sure. Very good. So where, what next for you? What, what is it that you're focusing on next in the, in the short term and even in the long term? Uh, in the short term at the moment, obviously with COVID-19 at the moment in Victoria, you can't really plan too far ahead. So I'm sort of living day by day, setting myself weekly challenges, getting all my running and weights done. Um, and getting my skills, uh, improving in the skills that I need to for the next season and spending time on those things. Um, and then also, you know, just having a good time doing some different things as well. So hiking or anything like that um, that's, you know, within COVID restrictions. Um, before COVID, you know, we were able to do those sorts of things and now so much we have to sort of stay at home. So um, just making sure that, you know, I'm enjoying that time um, at home, but also getting some stuff done. Uh, but long term, I'd like to finish my physio degree and uh, this year and get into training with my teammates in November, ready for 2021 um, season. I'd love to win a premiership with the Melbourne Football Club as a team. We are gunning for that, so that this will be our year for sure. Now, I, would it be a dream job of yours to be a physiotherapist for a football team? So let's say, at, at, you know, because you're not going to be playing for the rest of your life, but, you know, you, you come to the end of your football career. Would that be a bit of a dream job for you? Uh, funny, funny you ask that, Ralph. I actually, I don't feel that way at the moment. <laughs> I, um, I, I might, I might feel that way, but I, I really love how I've got a different side to my life with physio it's not involved in sport because sport's such an you know a major part in my life I love how I'm just helping you know the general public with their injuries um or in hospitals for that matter it's completely different so I like how separate it is at the moment but we will see 
But I love what you've said too, because as you as you will know, and as you do know, job satisfaction is super duper important. So you need to love what you do, because it'll come out in in every way. T- just tell me, out of curiosity, what jobs have you had? You know, through your teenage years, have you have you worked at Macca's? Have you worked at Hungry Jack's, Target? Ah, uh, Ralph, you got me again. I actually haven't. I actually haven't had a real part time job. Um, I haven't been able to fit it into my schedule with being a dual sport athlete. Um, and juggling school, uni, uh, everything like that. So I've been really lucky to have, you know, great supportive parents. But I've also made sure that, you know, every opportunity I get to, I guess, harness a sponsorship uh, deal um, has put me in a really good position now to have that income from some sponsorships that I have. So I'm connected with Rebel Sport, um, Fernwood Fitness and you know that those opportunities that I've had in the past have really helped me to, I guess, reduce my part-time load jobs. And you're also the face of Auskick as well. You love the yeah, little Auskick yeah. videos that you do. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're embarrassed by them, but I love watching them, and I'm no, sure <laughs> there are kids who love watching you as well. You, you're certainly not. I, I, no one could ever label Libby Birch as camera shy. She loves being on camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, I uh, get into a bit of a character when I uh, do all my <laughs> AFL Oz Kick videos. My inner kid comes out, and uh, it's all for the kid enjoyment, especially during this really difficult time. I, I mean, I, I like watching the, the footy during the weekend, but one of my favourite parts is when Brayshaw does that little those little interviews with the kids. They're just so naive and cute and it's just amazing to watch those come up we've got some messages that have come in you're an inspiration to all Libby keep up the amazing work with your physio course and with your AFLW career thank you inspiring Lizzie thanks for sharing and you you really are an inspirational young lady I mean the reason we chose you as an SSV ambassador is because not only are you a great player but you're a fantastic human being off the court you love kids you know and you love life and we just love the role model that you are as a person so we're excited about what your future holds fact is you're only 22 so you're only young you've got another however many years left to do whatever it is that you love doing and we look forward to seeing you go from strength to strength now you've had some amazing years but i think the next four years are going to be some of your best Thanks, Ralph. Thanks for having me. And um, thanks to all the kids and ev- parents listening to this. I think it's such a great initiative by School Sport Victoria to um, have a chat to athletes and their ambassadors on board. Um, wishing everyone uh, very, very safe um, and, and happiness during this time, even though it's incredibly challenging certainly is and look we've got in the show notes we've got your instagram account so if anyone wants to contact you and ask your question you're you're always open to those sort of things which is great uh next week we've got luke matthews olympian luke matthews who's very different to libby birch uh and he certainly has some achievements under his belt as well superstar in the making so We'll see him next week. And Libby, we're going to continue to champion you and get right behind you and just love you to bits. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Raph. Bye.